And welcome back to Captain Reviews. We're going to go through the next five posted creations that were posted in my Discord. So if we uh, go ahead and look at my Discord here, we have the Captain Reviews channel, which will be linked in the description. So uh, last time ended off with Birdie the Bus, so we're going to go through. We have Benzin's um, fire truck here, the Spruce. We have the 3014 Freight by Krim. We have the um, HCB65 Estrella from Mr. G. We have a work in progress um, locomotive from Krim, and we have the Mimic Rib from Rebel Raken. So uh, go ahead, and first thing I like to start with is going over the um, workshop page. So bring up the workshop pages. So first one we're going to do here is the Spruce 4x4 Forest Fire Truck, and so let's zoom in so that we can read it. So we'll look at a couple pictures here. Looks good, nice and tall. Should handle well off road. Nice water cannons. Good looking interior. All right, so let's go ahead and read the uh, workshop page here. So only credit by is Benzin. Uh, we have the Spruce 4x4 fire truck, forest fire truck, designed the late 80s. Spruce 4x4 is a small, nimble, fast, strong, and capable forest fire truck. Thanks to its short wheelbase and off-road suspension, Spruce can reach the most isolated forest compared to other fire trucks. Spruce's dual water cans with triple strong pumps provide good spraying range, and thanks to its special rear suspension, Spruce can carry 6,500 liters of water without any issue. Being an off-road fire truck, Spruce can fill its tanks from natural water bodies as well as from human infrastructure when needed. <coughs> Specifications. Water capacity, 6,500 liters. Top speed, 120 uh, kilometers an hour or 75 miles an hour, range 350 kilometers, 220 miles, 3.25 meters high, 6.75 meters long, and 2.25 meters wide. Features dual water cannons operate from driver's seat, radio, lowerable water pump to suck water from natural water bodies, emergency lighting system, 4x4 drivetrain, 4-speed manual transmission, always like a manual, backup hand crank uh, battery charger, so that's neat using the new uh, manual parts. 4x4 drivetrain offers suspension. Uh, Spruce features an always active 4x4 drivetrain system along with really robust off-road suspension system, so that's neat. Out of water, if you run out of water, you can fill Spruce's tank uh, with two ways. Lowering the water pump and sucking from natural water bodies, and like this. Or you can fill the water tank via hose, so it'll be a side load. Credits, fire station, emergency lighting system. Please do not modify or re-upload the vehicle. All right, good. So let's go ahead and let's get after it with the Spruce. So we are in Industrial Frontiers. Go ahead and load up the Spruce. So right here. All right, so we'll look at it in the editor really quick. So I like to do this to see if there are any sort of um, neat tricks to hide some stuff. Looks good. A lot of good detail in here. All right, doesn't look like there are any tricks. Let's go ahead and spawn it, and we'll look at it in the world. All right, so a nice, uh, tall s suspension. I like the front here, kind of Unimog-ish style. Good uh, detail in here on things like, uh, you know, the edges of the door. That's always nice to see. It's tough sometimes because, you know, you can't always get the paint blocks in where you want them. I often struggle with that. Nice detail on the stripe there and the fire logo have some uh, supplies here so well we have all gearing and clutches and elect and uh, looks like gens torch and fire extinguisher this is the main panel that we saw there on the description for filling fill pump drain hose pump bunch of fire stuff there that's good side here it looks like we have a electric cable anchor and a uh, hose anchor for refueling Here's our uh, filler for filling on the from bodies of water down up and pumps tail lights. Here's our suspension, so that's a neat multi multi stage suspension system. Let's see what we have on this side. More more uh, equipment. So this should this should be good for land rescues. It's often tough when uh, there's the emergency hand crank. It's often tough, you know, to do some land rescues. Um, I think the new area is going to be good for that. Um, Big wide open spaces uh, make it a little bit more viable to drive vehicles around. So, um, you know, this is a good vehicle to have all that equipment. You can do it. So, here is our pump cannons. And nice to have a spare tire. It's cool to have the number on the roof. 
All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, where are we at here? Right there. And let's go in. So door, rear utility panels. Okay, so we can open that from inside as well. Lights, temp, RPS, heater. So that's good. Gear, handbrake is currently Handbrake. Okay, it's a uh, circuit breaker, so I see what it is there. That's dome light. There we go. Uh, speed, fuel, water tank, ignition. And we have turret cam. Emergency lighting system. So let's check out our flashing lights. Flashing lights are really good. I like these on the side. Those are really cool. Yeah, they look really good with the... Um, Kind of like the pixelation from the um, diffusers that would be on there. That's really cool. I like that. It's good detail. I'm just going to shut the uh, radio. Where's my? I'm going to shut the energy lightings off so they're not flashing. Push to talk. Up down on the radio freak microphone. Some more uh, stuff in here. Looks good detailing. I like the seat backs. Those look cool. It's a good way that if you don't have space to put in something else's seat backs, kind of paint them in. Looks nice. And we have the door on that side. Nice big XML edited window. That looks good. All right, so let's um, handbrake is on. Let's shut that off. Uh, manual transmission. So let me continue actually looking at how to operate. So AD steering, WS throttle. Left right is water cannon. So we can do left right. Up down is also the water cannon space. Um, pressurized water tank hold. There goes our water. So nice and pretty simple and easy and right off the bat you can be fighting a fire nice uh, let's see left blinker is one and we also get a uh, noise for that that's good two is right blinker three is gear up four is gear down spray angle up is five and six so let's go ahead and go five and six and so it either gives us that straight stream or we get the wiggle woggle stream all right, so cool. I like that you have to press space. That's nice. Um, you know, generally I'll do toggle. I think pressing, pressing and holding is a uh, is a good way to do it. That might be better than what I usually do. Uh, three and four are gear. So let's get going. And I stalled it. Look at that. Still not sure if the brakes are on or off. So let's actually get out and check. Oh, I'm gonna go like this. Just kind of want to check um, which way the brakes are running here. Okay, where you at here? I'm trying to... Brakes true, so brakes are on at the moment. So let's go ahead and... So where's handbrake? Okay, let's see. What is up here? Okay, it's hard for me to see just because where I'm at here. So handbrake on. Let me see if they're off. Brakes true. And it could be something that I'm seeing the with the panels close together. It's tough to for me to see right where things are. So handbrake. Hmm. Why am I struggling with this? I will check it in a second to see what's up and why I can't get the brakes off. Heater, lights, radio, emergency lighting system. Let's start it up. See what's up. Make sure I miss anything, and then I'll go uh, look in the editor to see what's up. So the front brakes are definitely on. All right, let me uh, bring in the editor and see what's up with the brakes. So right here we have parking brakes, parking brake, push button pressed. So let's check it. Okay, so where are we at here? Okay, I'm interested what's up with these brakes. Is that even the right brakes? So, right, oh, it's, it's the panel behind it. Okay, let's check this. This is the panel here. So what is that? That is... Okay, so there is a toggle button here so it's doing a remote control of this toggle button is it 
Okay, right here. So that's being controlled by here. So that is constant on signal. Hmm. Miracle switch box. This is my button for my brakes. Okay, what is up, dude? So that's going there. That's a constant on. Okay, so I think it's something to do with, you know, um, that's a way to do it with the, um, what do you call it, the circuit breaker. What I'm going to just do here is, that seems to be my only issue here, is those being on. So I'm just going to disconnect them for now. I'll ask Benzin how um, to do it. I assume it's just something I'm doing wrong. And so just keep moving. We'll uh, go ahead and start it up. All right, so let's go for a little drive here. So let's go three into first gear. See one. So I like having a manual transmission. Um, really makes it um, so you can control your speed a little bit better. Despite this being very tall, let me see if I can roll it. So despite it being very tall, you notice it's like I'm trying my best to roll it. It's hard to roll, so you know I have yet to be able to roll it. So that's um, that's really good. That you know testament to stability if you can keep this you know something this tall from rolling. And so let's kind of just do a little bit of off-roading here. So I really like all the features of this. I like the uh, the water cannons are really good. So like I'm I'm putting this through its paces. It took all of that to roll it. So that's very stable. That's good. That's uh, nice and stable. You see, I had to drive straight up a mountain to get it to roll. So that's really cool. Give it a quick little uh, drive some more, and we'll move on to the next one. So, uh, let's go into first. So, I'm not sure uh, what I was doing wrong with the brakes, but it was probably a me problem. So, nice and easy. You can even, um, you know, you can st still uh, move and fight fires as you're, as you're kind of, or set up to fight fires as you're going. So, you can get come right on station and, like, you know, like right there, let's say the fire's there. I can already be fighting, steering, fighting, fighting, fighting. So, this would be a really good... Uh, firefighting craft. So I really like this. That's, again, probably a me problem. It's probably not a problem with the vehicle that the um, brakes were having. I was having an issue with the brakes. That's probably just a me problem. Uh, looks great. I really like it. So we'll move on to the next one here. So thanks, Benzin, for submitting that. All right, so I'm going to kind of go a little out of order here. Um, will I? No, I will not. Um, I need to move to a over here to my train. So we have one land vehicle, a couple trains, a couple boats. So we're going to go to the Monarchy Brain launch site. Alright, so let's go ahead and launch our next vehicle here and we'll look at the workshop page. Alright, so next vehicle here is the 3014 Freight. So it's a NSR North Sea Rail. Go through a couple pictures. I really like the front design. I like the uh, elevated um, cab. Nice futuristic design. You know, I tend to build my stuff more retro, so it's nice to see futuristic. I've always liked this style of train. Very cool. It's from uh, Terrasaur. So there's a collection, North Sea Rail collection. Let's click on it really quick. So as you can see, a bunch of different, um, bunch of different things that go with this. All right, so uh, North Sea Rail Banshee, the 3014 freight is a locomotive designed to pull freight. It has a smooth, streamlined surface to achieve good fuel efficiency. The engineer and passenger seats are stowed to the side, moving to central position when in use. Features: rear-facing camera, NSR follower system, compatible with other NSR locomotives. Train to wagon braking, compatible with other NSR. Wagons and carriages usage. If you'd like to use this in your own creation, please do so. Please have fun and credit where you feel appropriate. All right, so that's good. So we'll figure out how to operate this in game. So where am I at here? There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna visually see where my tracks are because we need to place this on the right track to make sure it works. And I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky and I'm gonna give it a test. And so this test may or may not be fair. Um, this is. I don't do a ton of locomotives, but this tends to be how I test out some of my locomotives just to get things kind of going is 
I bring along my weight car. And so the weight car is pretty excessive. And so we'll give it a little test with the weight car, see how it does or not. Um, and let's launch. You gonna launch? Uh, you have to actually press the paste, don't I? I forgot to press paste. Alright. There we go. So now we should have a weight car. So my weight car is connected. So I really like the, um, the look of this. The paneling is excellent. Um, you know, I was trying to do some paneling actually on my loco yesterday, and this paneling looks really good. Um, I didn't, uh, I kind of gave up on my paneling, did some more. 3D elements. This panel looks excellent. The general paint job is really good. Good detailing here. I like the kind of streamlined bumper. Very cool. I like the detailing in here. Really cool. It's nice to have a ladder here. Let's go ahead and jump uh, ladder up. It's often tough to put the ladders on the side, of course, because um, it will they hang over three blocks, so then that way you can't get um, you know, it in all the time. So, all right, so we're in here. Let's see, what do we have here? So we can go back into the engines. So a lot of large engines, it appears. So one, two, three, four large engines. What's that? Lights. Okay, that's cool. Uh, toggle two side. I'm not gonna press extraneous stuff. I, you know, I don't wanna break anything. All right, so we'll go up into the operation cab. I really like this design of um, this elevator. This looks really good. This is kind of like the type of cockpit I like. Uh, let's see, we have padded seats, track switch, engine temp, throttle, brake, reverse, horn, wheel slip, um, speed, headlights, side markers, cab lights, heater, follow remote, invert, reverse, train frequency, engines. Alright, so we have a camera showing me my weight trailer. We'll do headlights, side markers, cab lights, heater. Alright. Reverse, horn, okay, good track switch we don't need right now, engine temp, fuel, bat, and engine RPS. Let's go ahead and sit in here, and let's give it another look outside with the lights on, looks good. Side lights look really cool, I like that. Alright, was there another light? Cab light, just the cab lights, so we'll shut those lights off just for performance. Okay, brake zero, let's start going up on the throttle. Again, this is most likely going to be a slip city just because my weight trailer is pretty much a pain, but it's handled it really well. All right, now that we've gained a little speed, we'll add just a hair. So that weight trailer is pretty ridiculous. So we're doing 40 kilometers an hour, even with the weight trailer. So that's really nice. Give it a little more speed here. That's not bad. We're we're still gaining speed here with that um, with that weight trailer back there. So that's really good. So this uh, should be able to haul quite a few cars if it's holding that weight trailer, no problem. All right, so this is really good. I like this. It's um, despite being really detailed, it, it's pretty simple. I really like the view out of this cockpit. Uh, the aesthetics and design are excellent, so that's really good. I enjoy this a lot. This is this is a great build. Let's grab this and bring it back to workbench. All right, so let's go to our next train here. And so let's see, go workshop. Uh, I'll do the Arctic Runner, and I'm just going to line it up on the tracks, and then we'll read the workshop page. So again. With this new um, area, sometimes you have to line these up on the tracks so that they will snap to the tracks now. So, All right, so let's go ahead and we'll read the next workshop page. I hope I didn't just close something I needed. Um, okay, so we have the Arctic Runner. So the Arctic Runner is by Arsonist. Arctic Runner is used for long-range hauling freight into the Arctic. This is a work in progress, so don't expect much. So um, because it's a work in progress, I'm not going to bother throwing the uh, weight trailer at it. Uh, the weight car, um, that's probably excessive for a, a work in progress. Looks really good. Again, I, I really like an elevated um, cockpit. So let's go ahead and we'll spawn it and we'll look at it in there. 
All right, so we have our coupler, our new three wheels, so those, that's been at least updated probably, a fuel lane, nice detailing there on the side. That looks really good. Let's go ahead and get in the front, or the side rather. All right, and let's kind of look through. So that is looking into the fuel tank. That's battery, some bunch of equipment there. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we have forward, reverse, and key button. Uh, WS is throttle brake. Space is set to zero. Uh, one is lights. Two is uh, switch track. So we can also do forward here. What is this? Is this a panel? Okay, so I do not see... Um, I don't see anything for that panel. All right, so let's go ahead and speed it up. So I can also use WS. All right, so it seems to be running really well. Let me check, see what my speed is. I'm not sure exactly what the um, mile per hour kilometers, I'm not sure what that is. Good visibility in here. I probably, you know, I might like a window here, but um, I don't know if that's possible. You know, but it's again, it's a train. You're not, <laughs> you're not having to check your blind spot for somebody passing you, so that's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, I really like this. It's it's nice and simple. Work in progress, but it's looking good certainly so far. All right, so let's grab this in and uh, let's head to our next one. So. Uh, we have two two uh, boats left, and so we're going to go, we need a somewhat large dock, so let's go over here. And uh, we'll go through the last two, which are boats. Alright. Yeah, I'll just go right here. This is a cool base, just because you can do so much in this small area. Alright, so we'll bring in the... Uh, first, we'll do the Estrella. So, HCB 65 Estrella Center Console Yacht. So, a lot of good detail in here. Light up um, paintable uh, indicators on the rear and the engines. Nice uh, display of wealth here. Very cool. So, four 600s. It's from, this is by Mr. G. Uh, Mr. G, Mr. G boat manufacturer, and so we'll look at that. We'll see all the items. So a bunch of different boats and trailers. Very cool. Very neat. All right, let's go through. So um, for the perfectionist, the Estrella is an in is an impeccably. <laughs> so let's see if I can read this morning. This is distracting me here. Every time that flashes, I look at it and I'm not looking at the words. For the perfectionist, the Estrella is an impeccably conceived and artfully crafted mega center console yacht, giving you high class luxury and comfort without sacrificing performance. HCB yachts. So, have the uh, what it's based off of there. HCB Estrella is the world's largest center console boat. I made it and uh, remade it. I remade it one-to-one -one in game with realistic features and looks. It can act as a usable in-game boat and can be used as transportation or role play. I would not use this more than like 40% wind as it acts like a huge wind sail. I also updated it with windshield wipers. That's cool. Instructions and other abilities. Enter the captain's helm at the console. Use the key to the left to start the engines and main systems. Use thrusters if needed and throttle on the right to move. There's a breaker box behind the rear console seat if needed, and fuel and shore power hookups are in the back area. Specs. Aspect information. Length, 65 feet. Height, 12 feet. Max speed, 70 miles per hour. Per hour. Uh, fuel, 4,800 liters. Power plant, four fake outboard 600. So that's interesting. They're faked. We'll uh, look at those. Player seats, 13 suitable. Cost, 65,000. Well, that's pr uh, it's pretty cheap for a yacht. Um, is a... Let me see. Is a tank. Okay. Uh, without a comma, I was uh, struggling in my head to figure that out. Is a tank, comma, in the water, and comma, and toes well. <laughs> Microcontroller is used. So let's just open these up. Um, so this is from um, Banu. So I like to make sure everybody gets credited for their work. Uh, so we have uh, Zizzo's um, 
depth. I have that in um, Triton at the moment. All right, so uh, Mr. G builds, please don't steal. So we will not steal. All right, so let's go ahead and let's um, launch the Estrella. Right there. Okay, good. So I'm just going to move this. Uh, where are we at here? I'm going to move it down and over so it doesn't do the belly flop. Where is my arrows? Where are my arrows? Here. There they are. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to move it so I don't have to fly to get it. All right, so let's take a look at it really quick. And player damage is on. All right, so we'll start at the bow. We'll head towards the stern. So we have a nice seating area in the front here. A uh, nice table, a couple loungers, very nice. Center console area here, very cool. Uh, come around the, the stern, more seating there. Some uh, That's the shore power and refueling. Speakers and everything, Well, very well detailed. These are cool seats, look very realistic. Our motors, I'm very interested in these motors. So there are side thrusters there. Have the um, why? Okay, enough with this player damage. All right, so we have our four sixes, six hundreds, and we have Mr. G's dream. <laughs> That's good. All right, let's go ahead to the helm here. So we have the key button on the left. Uh, manual builds enable emergency locator. Hopefully, we don't need that. Spots, console lights. Compass, uh, fuel tank, fuel intake, speed, depth, reverse, displays. So we have a nice uh, Mr. G system starting screen there. That map that I credited here, Zizzo's depth gauge. Deck lights, underwater lights. I always like underwater lights. Let's look at those. Those are cool. I like the color, the coloration on those. They match the 600s. Throttle. AD is turning, left right is bow stern thrusters, so let's go right. So let's translate to the right. As you can see, makes it nice for docking. Alright, and then up down is the trim. Okay, it's good to have manual trim, I like that. So let's give it the beans. And so I'm gonna trim it once we get going here, so we'll kinda play with it like it's getting on plane. So it did say, let me check the controls again. Up, down is trim, so. Just trying to see which way I'm trimming it. I can't tell which way I'm trimming it. Okay, very cool. So it's nice in a straight line. Let's check the speed here. 64 miles an hour. Let's give it a hard turn to the right. So it's nice and well behaved at high speed. Not rolling or bucking too much. Good stability system on there. So I'm curious. So it looks like the um, it's often difficult with outboards to move the outboard. You have to really get your stability system tuned in if you move the outboard. So um, you see how they're nice and uh, reserved. They don't turn too much, which is good. And then I assume they're using those fins in the bottom as most or some help with the steering. That's a good idea. What I'll often do is do all my steering with the outboard. And I run into that issue where the boat wants to misbehave. Oop, 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 I forgot. I I'm, I'm, thought I was driving one of my boats that um, I pressed spacebar to stop it. So <laughs> I realize I need to uh, bring the throttle back. I don't want to crash. So it's really good. I like this. Um, very well detailed, really cool, handles well, this should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, the the wind limitation isn't a big deal because, you know, you probably don't really want to be going out there in a luxury boat. Um, this is a cool radar. Um, you know, these, these look really cool for um, simulating the real radars, LIDARs and stuff. So that's really cool. I like this a lot. All right, so let's go to our last one here. So we have the McRib. So, mini McRib starter-ish boat. So, let's go through some of the picks. So, a nice little starter boat. McRib Rebel, Res Rebu Rebel Rescue Services. Tongue-tied I am. All right, that looks really cool. Let's start going through here. So, uh, McRib trailer, if you want to trailer it. It's by Rebel Raken. 
Uh, description, small rescue craft that was made to fit on a larger ship or used alone. So that's neat. Price, 20000 So that's very reasonable for a beginner um, save. I think you have 20-something, so you should be able to launch and use this right away. 22 feet, 6.5 feet height, 896 kilograms, so that's nice and reasonable. 55 knots, especially if you're going to lift it on a boat. 55 speed, 55 knot speed. Uh, two four-cylinder modulars. Uh, 15 max RPS, uh, 65 degrees C max temp, uh, 749 liter fuel, 143 kilometer range, runtime 84 minutes, uh, 18 liters per se 15 liters per second. Hmm, that seems pretty high to me, but maybe not. Uh, seating capacity 1 plus 9. Can be spawned cheaper if you remove the antenna off the rear. Okay, startup ignition key 1, hot key to turn on the engines. Give throttle using WS, it's reset. Or throttle lever sticky. Press S when using lever to reset to zero. All right, so that's good. You can either use it kind of WS um, to, to do minor tweaks, or you can leave the throttle engaged. Enable clutch using space trigger. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, boat has a tendency to keep moving if the clutch is enabled and throttle is at zero. Don't forget to disable it when uh, wanting to sit still. Prop brake is enabled when you disengage the clutch. Okay, reverse is kind of wonky. Only use about 25% throttle and seems to be all right. Indicator on the roof will turn on when reverse is enabled. Keyboard will flash when autopilot is on. Nose trim seat up down only negative trim 0 to negative 0.25 to pitch the nose down. So, uh, you know, we have running trim. Toggle equipment charge circuit breaker on to send electricity to all equipment slots. So that's good to shut those off so that if you're parked and you don't want to drain your batteries, you can shut those off. Gear, six first aid kits, a defib, an oxygen mask, an underwater welder, two welding torches, four ropes, one fluid hose, hidden gear. Wanted the boat to look clean, didn't have much room to fit gear. Center console, two fire extinguishers on either side of the clock, red squares, and pick seven. Rear floor, two empty one by threes, one, six empty one by ones, one dive suit. Microcontrollers used. The Garmin Echo, uh, I'm not going to go through all of these like I did the last one, there's just too many, so... Um, you know, these are all well um, accredited for those um, that, um, that they've used for the uh, build. All right, so let's go ahead here and let's uh, load up the McRib. A mini McRib, my, my apologies. I want to get the name, I want to get the name right. I know that's if my stuff's not named correctly, sometimes I get upset. So let's see, there it is. See if I can end up doing this dry. Ah, look at that. All right, so nice and small. I like this for um, a starter boat. One, two, three there, three there, six, seven. And then what's in the front? I saw some people sitting on the roof, I thought. Uh, nine, yep, so nine plus the one driver as stated, so that's good. Uh, let's see, ignition. And then high control, so one is starter. All right, good. Activate microphone, channel up and down, RPS, temp, bat, fuel level in liters, beacon locator, silence, in distress, <laughs> bridge, uh, nav, spot, deck lights, let's look at them. That looks good. I like the turned um, spotlights, those are cool. Have some pivots on that one, that's nice. Have a little bit of a prop obstruction there for towing. Make a terrible uh, banging noise if that got hit with a prop. Uh, let's see. Okay, so space enables the clutch. Uh, two is reverse, reverse. Three autopilot. Trailer release. Okay, so let's. Um, so we can do WS. So this is good for like a little bit of maneuvering. So let's say we want to maneuver. I can let go of W, and as you can see, it does. It returns the throttle. So good for maneuvering. And then I can use the throttle to maintain that. That's a nice way to do it. This looks cool. This is good detailing up here. Um, I assume for the autopilot. Uh, ADF. Ooh, that's good. ADF bearing. That's what I use as a system like that. So that's really cool. I really like that. Good detailing in here. Grab rails. That's really cool. So let's give this a little bit of paces. Nice and fast. Good for rescues. Nice and stable. You know, it's not rolling too much. I really like the rib aesthetic. Um, you know, that's hard to get right sometimes and still have it um, operate well. 
So that's really cool. So it has the little Magol winch there, so it could do some good towing. Nice XML um, edited um, poles for the uh, for the uh, canopy. So this looks really good. I like this a lot. Let's go ahead and um, S. S will zero out our thrust. So that's nice. Uh, makes it so that you can easily just tap that in emergency so you don't run into stuff. So these are all really great creations today. I really enjoyed uh, using them. I appreciate you guys putting them on there. So if you would like me to review your craft, um, you can go on the Discord. The link will be included in the description. And you can post it there. And I've usually been doing five at a time, depending on how complex they are. And I'll just keep doing them in order. So I will see you guys in the next one.